Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for having me on the show, first and foremost. Uh, absolute pleasure uh, to be with you, mate. But um, yeah, I, I guess uh, my own sort of journey in that regard started just through pure interest. So I went to school um, sort of inner city, Sydney, and um, uh, didn't go to school on Wednesdays because I went to the races instead. And then yeah. um, generally after school, I would go and train at Johnny Lewis's gym. So um, I, I was sort of fascinated with racing and boxing um, through all of those years and always thought if I could make a living out of doing that sort of stuff, it'd be, um, that'd be fantastic. And uh, yeah, I was obviously really... Um, fortunate that I've been able to do that um so now uh, primarily doing boxing but uh previously doing a, a quite a bit of horse racing as well and um yeah I've had the the great pleasure of calling world title fights and um group one races uh hosting group one races and stuff like that so yeah it's uh it's just something that's always been around me and around my family so um boxing in particular um <clears throat> I um I, I was into it when I was a kid. I really enjoyed the sport, but uh, I, I, when I was at school, Mike Tyson came back and he was fighting against Peter McNeely. And yeah, 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 yeah. Nine seconds. Yeah. And a few mates and I were trying to find somewhere we could watch it. It was on Sky Channel in those days. You could only get it in the pubs. So um, we were sort of standing outside a pub in Glebe in Sydney, and um, someone came out and said, "Look, you can come in and watch the fight." And the person who came out. I recognised straight away it was Jeff Harding, the mm. legendary um, Australian boxer who won a light heavyweight world championship with that incredible performance against Dennis mm. Andres. And just by pure coincidence, he um, was drinking in this pub this day and uh, brought us in. Um, we watched the fight, so I knew everything about him. So I sort of chatted to him a, a little bit, you know, as much as a kid does to Jeff Harding, who's on the piss and um, yeah. being Jeff Harding. <laughs> And at the end of it, he said, oh, look, you seem to know a lot about boxing. You seem interested. You should go down and train with, with Johnny Lewis. He was still with Johnny Lewis at the time. And he gave me Johnny's number. And, and the next day was a Monday. And, and I went down to Newtown Police Boys and um, sort of waited around. And Johnny turned up eventually. And I was like, oh, Jeff Harding told me to come down. And I think he was a bit confused. But yeah. <laughs> ultimately, ultimately, he let me come and train. And I, I trained there for, for many years after that. And, um, yeah, sort of was hooked on boxing ever since then. Kostya was in the gym at the time as well. Oh, wow. So it would have been around some greatness as well eh, at that time as well. Like just yeah, uh, yeah. especially with Costa, Crazy. what he went on to do as well. How about the, um, how yeah. about like the journalism side and the reporting is, is that just purely of the fact of you being in the gym and you felt like you wanted to be part of the sport and that's where you saw kind of that you felt like your, your energy can, can kind of go towards and where you can kind of provide the best, um, uh, you know, kind of, I guess, the best contribution to the sport? Um, yeah, well, I, I went into, as soon as I finished school, um, I started working in radio. Uh, and from there, I ended up um, in television um, off the back of that and sort of just mainstream stuff, like not not specifically boxing. I was reading the news. I ended up reading the, the news on Channel 7 and the sports news. And I was on the Today Show and, the, and Sunrise when I was at 7 and then switched around and ended up at all the channels, really. I did Sports Tonight and um, uh, some stuff at uh, in racing coverage on 9 and read the news on Sky News before it was, um, you know. Yeah, because you were everywhere. Yeah, when I did my research on you're at Sunrise, you're at Sky Sports, you're everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I've yeah. just sort of said yes to everything forever, you know. And, Why not, um, yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah, I, I've ended up working all over the place, um, too many places probably. But then ultimately um, after I finished sort of a, a good stint of doing mainstream um, stuff and a lot of stuff at Channel 7 in particular um, with reading the news and, and hosting different shows, then um, an opportunity came to to go back and do some stuff at main event, um, mm -hmm. sort of as a one-off uh, hosting gig when I think someone was away or something. And I did that and, and I've ultimately done every show, um, it, every major Australian boxing show since. Uh, so, yeah, it was just, you know, something that I always thought I would love to get back into doing and um, when I got the opportunity uh, as a one-off I sort of you know grabbed it and um, I've managed to to stay for you know uh, well over 10 years now doing all the all the major shows, all the so, shows so, yeah yeah how did um how did the the main event aspect is that just is that um I'm assuming purely on the fact that if there's a big event coming up, then everything leading up to it and et cetera, you, you, you're involved in it in terms of not just the broadcasting, but 
Um, because obviously with main event being a pay-per-view channel, it's not like every week or every other week, right? It's usually when there's a big event. So, um, yeah, well, well, previously it was like that and I would do sort of around a major event, they would ring and say, all right, we've got, you know, Mundine fighting whoever on this date. Um, can you make some content in the lead up? Can you host the press conferences and the way in and then do fight night? Um, and I did that for, for years like that. So I had all the other stuff on the side, all that stuff we mentioned. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, but um, nowadays uh, I'm full time at main event. So I sort of, um, awesome. you know, run the, the, the boxing there with, with other people who work with us um, and choose sort of what shows we're going to do internationally, what ones we can get um, with there being other broadcasters as well. Of course, um, yeah that sort of part of the process, how we're going to market different stuff with our marketing teams and um, publicity and making the promos and hosting all the press conferences and all that sort of stuff. And, and then, you know, contributing to all the content that we make around shows. So um, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a big role now. It's crazy, so right? Shows. Yeah. Cause it's not even just waiting for it now. Now you, you kind of, it's a, it's a, it's a um, future vision and you're kind of building towards that event, right. Which starts, it starts yeah. way before, right. With the content and um, with kind of building the yeah. hype and whatever kind of comes around uh, promoting a show. Right. So. Yeah, that's right. And dealing with the um, promoters, is a big part of it um, yeah yeah obviously they are the ones who put their skin in the game putting on an event and and we have to deal with them on how that event might work and what might be best um in terms of a pay-per-view outcome for them so wow. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so there's a lot of a lot, yeah, lot of yeah. stuff that and you, you know looking at cards and um contributing on cards and um figuring out you know what, what what's going to work ultimately and, and dealing with everyone involved so yeah it's a it's gone from being a quite a minor um sort of thing in the Australian sporting landscape to now it, it's yeah there are full-time jobs and it's a it, it's a it's an everyday thing figuring out what's going on next in Australian boxing what's your thoughts on Australian boxing right now um what's your view on it and um I know um you know I'm a big fan of what no, no limits doing in terms of just not even just the fights I mean um, you of all people would know, you know, you look at something like the UFC, you see the best, you know, in one card, you see the best fighters fight the best fighters. And I feel like with no limit um, with what they do in the Rose Brothers, um, you, you, you're starting to see that kind of format here where you're seeing the best, the best guys fight the best guys. But um, even just um, from a production, uh, from a production value and in terms of an entertainment aspect, um, you know, my, my older brother, who's a, who's a big boxing fan, you know, I had to kind of introduce him to, to like, you know, where, where you would have to go find boxing news and et cetera. Cause he goes, yeah. you know, he used to tell me, he's like, dude, I love boxing, but I just don't know where to look for, uh, you know, to keep in touch with what, you know, some of the local athletes and et cetera. But um, even he said, he goes, man, the, the, the production is like, it's such a good sh- uh, job. It's like an overall. And I had a, two of my mates from the gym, from my boxing gym, go to the, to the last show um, at Cooter's bank. Um, and yeah. they loved it. They said, man, it was just like a, it was almost like a, like a festival, like a circus, just with the, the, the fire show and et cetera. So yeah. um, what's your thoughts being in the game for so long, covering sports, um, covering boxing for so long as well? Um, I just feel like we're in a bit of a sweet spot at the moment, but I, I'm, I'm keen to hear your thoughts on it. Yeah, I think we're in the best spot the sport has ever been in Australia. Um, yeah. Obviously, there's been some golden eras, um, but some fantastic times, uh, you know, the victories of Lionel Rose and and what Jeff Fennick did through the mm. late, early, late 80s and early 90s and, and Koshizu and and then what Mundine and Green managed to do mm. with the sport. But uh, yeah, I think this is the best period for all of the bits and pieces that you've just described. It's, um, it's sort of, um, at the moment, I think we have a network in Fox Sports and Main Event. We have promoted is um, most notably in No Limit and DNL who we work with who really have the right idea about what you need to do in order to make this a mainstream sport and not just come in and sort of cash grab off um, the audience which mm. at different times is what has happened so now yeah there's a, a real focus particularly um, from, um, from from some of the people involved in the process in in, in matching really strong cards, but also telling everyone exactly what is going on in the sport, broadcasting it um, professionally, um, trying to give as much, much exposure as possible to the athletes and, and to the events. And mm. yeah, you saw the other night and um, the, the, your friends as well, that um, those sorts of events are now possible and they're not mm. just one-offs. Like, mm. No limit doing that uh, each and every Quite time. Quite regularly, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So yeah, it's then that was an incredible atmosphere. Obviously, you know, yeah. it's difficult when you call in the fights to really appreciate it. But <laughs> yeah, you could still, yeah, you could feel the heat of those um, flame, the flames, the yeah. And the entrance of Tim Zoo, like they're always so competitive, yeah. but that was at another level altogether. It does feel like we are not only a mainstream sport here, but what is going on here is um, it, it being watched. What's happening everywhere over, yeah. overseas, and yeah. There, yeah, there is a great deal of interest. I've got a lot of contacts in boxing in America and the UK in particular, and some some of the big names in the sport. Um, they have a firm eye on what we're doing here, and yeah. you know they're very impressed. Um, and obviously, a lot of them want to be a part of it. Yeah. Because, I mean, you only got to look at some of the boxes even, um, you know, with obviously with Tim, Tim Zhu's whole round robin of uh, being the mandatory title challenger and Jermaine, all these guys paying attention and mentioning the name and et cetera, even that aspect of it didn't really happen as much back in the day um, unless you were a, a very notable boxer who was a world champion um, where you had no choice but to kind of mention their name. But, yeah, like I agree with you. I feel like it's not even just local now. I think these shows are – uh, are starting to attract other people outside of Australia looking in. And and also with, um, you know, I know with MMA and a few other sports, but even boxing, I think we'll get to that stage where where Trans-Tasman is going to be looked at as a, um, as, a respectable, uh, as a respectable boxing country as well, where we produce really good boxes. And I think the, the, the shows and, and putting Tim on that platform and other fighters, obviously Cambosis with what he just did with Lopez and, and it's only going to open doors and it's going to, I think as well for a lot of local athletes, like um, I'm going to kind of segue to the left because of something you mentioned. I didn't want to, I didn't want to forget it, but you're talking about identity. And I, I felt like that's where um, I do a little, I do a little uh, show called inside the trenches where I kind of similar to UFC embedded. And and I did one with Cohen Mazadi and um, you know, prior to him winning the super welterweight and, yeah. and, and part of it, part of that was, is that storytelling, that connection, that emotional connection between the audiences and the fighters. Like, like you were, you were touching on like over, uh, um, you know, like fans paying over overpriced tickets uh, to shows and et cetera, and trying to kind of level that out a little bit. But I think a lot of it is also off the back of like, a lot of people just don't know, like they get to the, they get to the international stage and you see that they're representing Australia and you kind of jump behind them just because they're your countrymen, but there's no too much understanding of who this person is and that emotional connection. And with sports, especially fighting, I find that if there's this emotional connection, you kind of ride with them all the way through. And I think if you can create that from ground level, from grassroots and from a local level, then by the time they, they climb up and, and get to that international stage where they're fighting in Europe or in America, I feel like it's just such a big there's a, a, a massive big uh push especially you look at with george the the way the country got behind him um even then i was always like oh i feel like it had to be bigger but you know as it got closer to the fight it got huge but obviously i was being a bit critical leading up to it i was like man like there's not no one realized how big this is if he wins this like it's huge you know uh for Aussie boxing yeah, yeah, yeah. so i feel like a lot of it is just that emotional connection i feel like the through the storytelling and providing identities to these fighters, like through these promotions and what they're doing with no limit, you're starting to get an understanding of who these people are when they walk to the ring. And, um, you know, and uh, I've had a good chat. Like I'm, I'm very good mates with Ricky Colosimo and um, I know he fought on the no limit. And, and so we always have chats about this, but that's one thing that's started to change. And I feel like that's a big aspect of why people are kind of, you know, like you look at Isaac Hardman, I had him on the podcast and I had people messaging me like, yo, I can't wait to watch this. Like, you know, and um, and it's because these guys are starting to get a platform where they get to kind of be themselves and show who they are. And then kind of the audience or fans are starting to get a connection like, man, I can relate to him, you know. And yeah. I feel like that was the missing gap for a long time. Um, it's just that that gap where you get to kind of know who this person is, you know. Yeah, no, I think you're right. Mm. Um, yeah, it, it's about investing people in the athletes and in mm. the contests. And mm. a, a lot of the content creation that we've been doing now for sort of five or six years with Fox Sports and Main Event is around that process in, mm. in getting people involved and making people go, yeah, I really want to watch 
that guy or oh who is that person i want to see so social media plays a big role in it now um mm. and previously it was shows like 24 7 that hbo produced as mm. sort of the benchmark but um yeah now we sort of have the opportunity to do all that sort of stuff ourselves through main event and fox sports and some athletes get a great deal of exposure and and the ones that are truly invested in by promoters and, and by networks and you sort of see tim zoo all the time now and you know we were sort of telling people he was going to be a big deal before he was a big deal and mm. now he really is which mm. is um, which is really exciting Justice Hooney's another one who had a great deal of mm. fanfare and he's sort of going to that next level now next there's, level, yeah. there's others um, you mentioned George Cambosis and he's mm. a great example um, George sort of existed just outside the system and chose to go a different way and, and not uh, align with a domestic promoter and, and not align, therefore, with Fox Sports' main event. So he sort of just existed around the edges, and a lot of people were critical of the lack of coverage that he got. But really, what he did is he said, I, I'm not going to worry about that process and about the coverage that I might miss out on. I'm going to gamble everything, go my own route, um, fight overseas, maybe not have the profile or the exposure that, mm. that athletes that are, that are affiliated with a, a local promoter and network would mm. have, but I'm going to back myself to win this big fight. <laughs> and he did it and he won the fight so yeah. now he can do whatever he pleases but yeah um, yeah those who were critical of the lack of coverage in the lead up to to his fight against tfmo lopez yeah uh, the great pity for us at main event is that we didn't end up with that fight while it was with Triller, we were going to show that fight and then you would have seen a lot of coverage you would have seen that a lot makes of sense coverage. yeah um, but it was a disowned fight. So yeah. it's a competitor to main event and fox sports so that it, it's it's not really an opportunity for Trinity. those companies um to give huge mainstream coverage to that, yeah. that athlete even though you and i as australian boxing fans would love to see him getting all the exposure in the world yeah, yeah. Companies are going. and we're about trying to lend profile to these athletes not this yeah. sport to, to yeah. these athletes that we're helping yeah. up so um that's yeah, so crazy that yeah yeah if you exist just outside that framework then you're not going to get the same the same level of coverage um but it's just a, a route that some athletes choose sometimes it's a successful route um as it I, I think will prove to be for for george not to say that he couldn't have done all this if he had been um in the yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 maybe it would have happened faster but yeah but who knows but regardless it's going to happen for him now yeah. he's, he's won this fight um there's others who have taken that route haven't won their big fight and therefore have never got their exposure or their opportunity. And, and of course there's others again, who, um, you know, these, these people um, such as the domestic promoters and, and Fox sports and main event have invested in who ha haven't won the big fight and haven't got mm. to that level. So, mm. so they sort of haven't, haven't managed it either. It's a, a tricky sport. A lot of decisions need to be made by everyone in the process, but um, those decisions all lead you to a certain point and, um, and, and that's really what your boxing career becomes. It must be tough for you, man, being such a big fan and knowing that, uh, you know, you'd love to be involved in promoting even with Cambosis and whatnot, but knowing that everything behind the scenes just doesn't align because, you know, for whatever, as you explained, for whatever reason it is, um, with just being outside of the, you know, the kind of the domestic promotion or promoting it, but it must be tough for you as just a, a general fan, right? Like having to sit and uh, say, yeah. hey, I can't get involved in this, but, you know. Yeah, it yeah. is. Well, I still do, you know, I do... Yeah. The yeah, extent that I can do personally. Yeah, of course. Like, yeah, it's 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 not my place to say to you know Fox Sports yeah, and main event. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. they're, they're they're owned by massive companies. Um, yeah. To say, hey, we need to invest in this dude just because I want him to win a fight. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's not what they're about. So, yeah. um, but when but the the great thing is that now the fighters that are are with us, they are willing to invest in like Tim mm. Zoo's the the, the mm. great current example. Um, mm. So they've made him a, a household name through, you know, the affiliations that um, Fox Sports and Main Event have with the, mm. the News Limited Press. Um, you, you can't, you can't not know who he is now. And mm. with our shows being so successful, and um, and, and him having this this framework, um, it can really work. And hopefully, um, boxers see that, and um, you can tell that there is that opportunity here in this country now, and it's it's an exciting time. I think it's the perfect word you use as framework. And I think that's what came to me when I saw even just Tim's rise and even just not Tim's rise in terms of boxing, but just even in uh, Natara, like people starting to kind of get an understanding of who he is and how good he is. Um, and I think what, what it's done now is it's laid a platform for um, boxers to, because a lot of it, a lot of it is, okay, I have a vision, but how do I get there? 
And now I feel like there's that platform and there's that, that avenue where, okay, this is how I can get to that stage where, okay, I, I go through the domestic run, but then internationally I can get, and you know, most, most guys yeah. that are all in, they want to be world champions, right? Like that's their goal. Um, they're not in it to just dance around. A lot of them that are fully committed are like their goal is I want to be world champion. And I feel like what this has done now is it's provided a really good platform. Like I always compare like, um, my my uh my cousin lives in San Francisco, so he goes to a lot of the college games, like the NBA uh, college basketball games, and the college uh uh um the the football games. And yeah. he was telling me, like, even with some of the pricing and etc., like, you know, he goes, man, it rivals like the NBA and the NFL, like, because yeah. the demand for it, but. A lot of these guys, by the time they get to the NBA, the NFL, um, to the major leagues and et cetera, there's a lot of hype behind them because they've been watched through that system. And even that college games and, and the community getting behind them is so huge that by the time you get to the big leagues, everyone kind of knows what you, you know, even LeBron, but like, look at the deal that LeBron got at the age of 17 or whatever it was, you know, like everyone kind of knew his projection and what he was capable of. And I feel like these kind of systems for boxing is going to allow that, you know, by the time they grow out of Australia, they're going to know. And like you said, everyone's kind of tuning in with these shows. And I feel like even more than Cambosis with Tim Zoo fighting in these headliners, it's, I feel like there's a sort of attraction to come and fight in, in Australia as well now. Um, you know, like they know that we can put on really good shows. Um, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah. Well, I think gone are the days where in order to be a successful Australian boxer, you have to go overseas. Yeah. Um, you can, you can have great success and earn a lot of money uh, by being a domestic pay-per-view star. It's it's a big market now. You can sell a lot of tickets, as we've seen in um, some of the stadium fights that we've had in recent mm. years, and even you know over ten thousand tickets for Tim Zhu in, in what essentially was just a, a stay busy fight against Takeshi yeah. in a way. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you don't have to go overseas and do it the hard way anymore. You still can, and George yeah. Cambosis is one who did. You still mm. can go that route, and you can be successful, but you can stay here and you can do huge things Tim Zhu if he wanted to he, he never has to fight overseas he can mm. he can continue to bring big fights here and and make a lot of money but in his own mind because his father went there and for you know the pressure that is on Australian boxers to show that they can mix it um, against international yeah. opponents but overseas he, he probably wants to do that and he probably will and he may do sooner rather than later but um, the, the really all of us in Australian boxing have to thank Jeff Horn because he's the mm. one who blazed this path. He mm. he um, got these fights on Fox Sports to try and build his profile, and then he was thrown in at the deep end against the legendary yeah, Manny, Manny yeah, um, in a stadium fight. Yeah, Sun Court. Yeah, he, crazy. He, gave, <laughs> he, he breathed new life into the sport, um, and, and he gave everyone sort of the blueprint as to what can happen from there. Tim Zhu is benefiting from what Jeff Horn did right now. Mm. And he, you know, he, he passed the baton in, in their fight. He said, mm. look, I've, I've had my run. I, I achieved a lot. I made a lot of money. I became a huge domestic star. And you forget how big a name Jeff Horn was for that year or so. Mm. After mm. That happy hour fight. Like, mm. He was mm. the biggest name in Australian mm. sport. If that had happened, you know, against other athletes other than Manny Pacquiao, it may not have been so successful, but they went all in on that fight on that path, they knew it was going to be Manny at some point and then they won the fight. And mm. um, that was just, you know, it, it, it showed what can happen in Australian boxing. If you it can, shouldn't be forgotten, eh? Can, yeah. Oh, no. Like yeah. what Jeff's can, contribution, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if you can line up that path and you can be a success, then you can do major things as a domestic athlete here in Australia. Yeah. Um, I know we kind of run out of time, so I've got one question, which is a massive set, uh, side to the boxing, which is another interest of mine, is uh, I noticed that you uh, got into feature films uh, as filmmaker. Yeah, I, I would love to talk to you about that. Um, a lot with Mercer Entertainment and, and what I'm trying to obviously build it to is 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 um, I did like a small short documentary not long ago, but I, I noticed when I was reading this that you did a documentary that did pretty well in the uh, film festival as well. Can you touch on that a little bit? Yeah, yeah. So I've um, yeah, I've made quite a lot of short films, um, and you know, had some success with those. Um, a couple of shorter narrative films, a couple of comedic films, and mockumentaries won quite a few awards, and was able to sort of establish myself in in, in that space. Um, wrote a couple of film scripts that you know got close to being made, and it's a difficult wow. industry if you yeah, if you play yeah. a part of it. You know, 
uh, you, you know, then anything can happen and you think you're up and you're, you're not quite there. But then I did make a feature um, and was commissioned to do so. And it was about the legendary Australian Cameroonian boxer, Sakio Bika, um, yeah. who came from uh, absolute squalor in the Douala in Cameroon and fought his way out of it to, to fight around the world as, as a B-side um, against people like Andre Ward and Joe Calzaghi um, and w- was never really given a chance of succeeding in the sport, but ultimately he did win a world title. Um, and we took him back to, as part of the documentary, we took him back to Cameroon and showed off his world title belt to Douala and the, you know, the city went crazy and just saw where he'd come from. So I made that film and um, uh, in, in sort of exploring, um, making this uh, feature documentary, I found out that he had a lot of big fans um, who were prominent names in, in mm. boxing globally, one of whom was Mike Tyson. So wow. I managed to, to get in touch with um, Tyson and, uh, and convince him to be an executive producer on the film. Um, so I got to spend a couple of days with with him and interview him for the film. And, and um, yeah, then when the film came out, um, was entered in all global festivals uh, just before the pandemic hit. Uh, and we won Best Documentary at London. Got to check uh, it out. I was, yeah. I was nominated Best Director at uh, Milan and, and a bunch of other Beautiful. awards. Beautiful, yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, ultimately the, the pandemic ended its run. And um, since then, yeah, it hasn't been released in Australia. Um, filmmaking introduced you to a lot of uh, interesting people, a bit like boxing. Um, right, A lot yeah. of people you would probably at times rather not interact with. Uh, but Good to know. <laughs> yeah. I met a few of those people in the making of this film. And oh, so okay. It exists, yeah. it exists in a in a corner of um, the universe somewhere, but hopefully it comes to Australia at some point so that um, Sakio's story can be told because he's a fascinating dude and he's had an, an incredible journey. And, um, yeah, we put a lot of work into the film, but it's it's been well received by, by those who've seen the international. Yeah, film. I was going to ask you whether you were on board as a producer, but you were on board as a director, which is uh, even more crazy. Yeah, that's awesome. So, I mean, a lot of the... the, the a lot of the the capturing of that documentary would have been off the back of you. What um, uh, what brought you the interest into filmmaking? Was that just was that something that that as was there as well? Like with like with yeah, with, I, I just you know, sort of wrote a um, I just wrote a a mockumentary as my first short film. I think a friend of mine had made a film. Um, I had no training in filmmaking. I didn't go to film school or anything. But um, I wrote a um, I wrote a a, a short film. Yeah. And um, I think your so, videos, uh, your videos just gone off. Yeah, uh, so, oh, there we go. Yeah, no, you're all right. All good. Yeah, um, yeah I, I just wrote a, a short mockumentary um, and made it sort of with some friends um, uh, on a on a nothing budget. Uh, yeah, just as a bit of fun, really. And yeah, it was proved to be quite successful. Um, and we won quite a lot of festivals and awards and stuff. So I just. Yeah, I, I sort of continued along those lines and then um, found a writing partner and wrote a number of feature films um, that we've shopped around the world and um, you know, had varying degrees of success. And uh, then when the opportunity came to make the film with Sakio, um, I thought it sounded like a, a, a fun sort of an adventure. You know, there was going to be a lot of travel in it. Um, I had the time to do that at, at that time. We went to Cameroon twice. Um, that would have been a really good trip, times. yeah. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. It was just really hard. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah, a difficult yeah. place to film because, you know, Africa um, is very different. Um, yeah, yeah. We had things happen like when we arrived in the country with, you know, a, a modest amount of film equipment, but also we were, we were giving a lot of stuff to the um, local boxing clubs and that. We arrived with all this gear and um, all of it went missing um, at the airport when we arrived. And so we had nothing to shoot with and... So we sort of asked the locals and Sakio, who, who was with us, what we did. And he just said, look, we'll go back there tomorrow and, and ask them if it's turned up, um, knowing full well that customs had just stolen it all. Um, so we crazy. went back and, and said, hey, is it turned up? And they said, oh, look, we can have another look for you if you give us this amount of money. And we were like, oh, okay. So we gave them that money and they give back like two pieces and they go, come back tomorrow and maybe give us this much. And we're like, oh. so we, this went on for days and eventually we got all the equipment back and, and all that sort of stuff. But um, just a, a really difficult place to film on, on so many levels, um, not just because of corruption, but, but also because of the elements and um, yeah, the nature of where we were shooting, but yeah, uh, difficult, but 
rewarding. Um, I just wish that the um, the film was uh, more available to an Australian Yes, yeah. Audience. yeah. So that, uh, so that you know people could see our work and and, and maybe it um you know it, it would feel like it was a, a more satisfying process yeah there. yeah but well hopefully in due I, time I, yeah yeah perhaps yeah. but I, I don't think um, yeah I, I don't think uh, a lot of people have truly satisfying experiences in the film industry it's a tough industry in australia and, and globally but um yeah good to have made a, a feature i'm not sure whether i'll do another or what we'll yeah do that, but i guess yeah maybe down the track so did um, essentially did a company like a production company get in touch with you saying this is the idea they had and they kind of wanted you on board or was it purely um, yeah ultimately yeah yeah, yeah ultimately, ultimately, ultimately like a film company yeah cool so it was like a local yeah, so, local film company essentially or a production company as such a yeah. local company yeah yeah, yeah. so um, yeah that's yeah. sort of how it worked I, I think you know um, certainly for a period if you were if you were looking to to do anything in a creative sense within Australian boxing, probably I, I was probably the person you would come to, um, given the overlap in the things that I did. So yeah, it sort of made sense for them to get in touch. And yeah. I've had a few of those sorts of opportunities. Um, some have been more attractive than others. And this is one that I, I went with. So um, yeah, it was, it was yeah. an experience, no doubt. Yeah. Um, just to kind of, uh, kind of ended off but you were talking a little bit about the film industry is that are you are you kind of basing it on kind of the relationships you got to have and the relationships you don't have and just kind of the uh you know the politics behind it trying to get things done like that that whole yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think so i think it's yeah. i think it's like probably what australian boxing used to be a little bit yeah. where it's um it is a small pond um and a lot of people are sort of fighting each other to get whatever is gifted to the pond. So, um, you know, everyone in Australian film sort of clambers over each other a little bit. Um, mm. There's various funding bodies who, um, you know, pretty openly display favouritism to different um, entities um, within the, the industry. Um, and then there's just people who might not be there for the right reasons within the industry. And unfortunately, mm. yeah, I came mm. across a couple of those, you know, that happens. Uh, it's no problem. That happens in boxing as well. You know, you come across people who you go, oh, I don't think you're in this for the right reasons. And ideally they don't make themselves um, a prominent figure within that industry. And at the moment we've got some very good people in Australian boxing, but it's just sort of the nature of, of people and politics is, yeah. um, is which is a big part of, of most things, of right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Right. You know, yeah. In, in personal relationships, it's a yeah. it's a thing. Like sometimes you just come across shit people, and yeah. you just have to deal with that. But um, yeah, well, I've had great experiences in in film and and in boxing, and I'm you know very privileged to have had them. And um, through sort of the, the the journey that we've spoken about from when I was a kid, and um, you know went into Johnny Lewis's gym and all that sort of stuff, just to be around that atmosphere and now to be able to make a career and um to to you know have have the seat that i have um within what we're doing it's um yeah it's it, it's great to be able to reflect on that and to to see what what has happened and and what i've been able to be a part of so i'm i'm, I'm really blessed i guess anything you really want to do in life and that you're passionate about is going to be hurdles left right and center with it right so yeah. <laughs> you might as well just get used to that idea that it's gonna oh, it's not gonna right. be easy you know that's what i told people it's like is, yeah it's just hard. yeah it's really hard. yeah like, yeah, and, right. and you're going to have people who who aren't supportive. Like, you're going to have a lot of people who aren't supportive, mm. as well as people who are. Mm. And when you find people who are, you mm. need to, you know, you need to give back to those people because, mm. um, yeah, it's it's rare. But, you know, mm. I've, I'm particularly within boxing at the moment, I'm, I'm, I'm very lucky to have some, some really good supporters, um, mm. you know, like oh, the, the promoters that we mentioned, um, people within um, Main Event and Fox Sports now, pe people like um, the, the fighters have, have always been great. And Jeff Fennick is um, one of my closest friends now, which is, you know, wild to think that, but uh, yeah. he's been so great for me. Yeah, I've had, had, I've had Jeff great. on and uh, I've had Jeff on the podcast as well. I had a really good chat right. to him. Yeah, we're, we're planning to do a part two. Yeah, it was what sort good. of mood was he in? Yeah, he was in a good mood. He was, uh, he was, uh, he was. We were chatting. There was so much to cover, and and obviously because of COVID, um, I actually uh, got in touch with him through his manager Paul. Um, Paul's kind of been hey, a big Paul supporter. Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald, yeah, Paul. He's been a big fan of um, and a big supporter of mine with all the content and everything I've been creating. And yeah. so, um, he actually put me on with Andrew as well. So I had Andrew Maloney on leading up to his oh, yeah. fight next week. Yeah, so I had him about two weeks ago. But I had Jeff not longer, and it's funny. Like I was telling Paul like two years ago. 
in my head, I was like, when I started this, I'm only about going into two years since I kind of created my brand and what I'm trying to do. And, and I said, I really yeah. wanted to talk to Jeff. So um, yeah, we spoke about so much and then we realized we're like, <laughs> dude, we could just keep talking. So I was like, so we kind of made an agreement that we're going to do a part two one day in person. And, uh, and then he'll, he'll touch on a lot of the other stories with Kerry Packer and Mike Tyson and all of that. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, no, nah, it was, it was good. He, he saw, he saw that I was just, I was fanboying him. You know, a fa- I was just a fanboy, just, you know, hearing all these stories with, with Johnny Lewis and how he kind of got into yeah. boxing and everything. So um, in a way it was good how we kind of left it off because I was like, I would love to kind of do this in person one day and, and, and kind of cover a, another aspect of his life as well. So, um, but no, it was, yeah. it was, it was, it was very nice of him to, to, to give him his time, give me his time. And yeah, oh, it was just very uh, generous. Yeah. It's and a lot of the local thing. guys that, and girls that grew up in that area, like a lot of them, when I posted it, they were like, Oh, he's a, you know, he's a local legend and et cetera. Like they're not even in boxing. They just in, they just in different industries or doing something different, but they all remember the time when they lived there and um, you know, oh, the yeah. Erskineville and yeah, Newtown and that whole area. And um, now it was really, it was really good to chat to him. He's a, he's, he's, he's a good bloke. He's a good bloke. And he was yeah, he's very, a- he's very candid and very open about a lot of the things as well with his relationship with Johnny and all this. And, and um, you know, and I, I never kind of forced it down there, but he kind of, he, he brought it up and, and I like that about it. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. No, he, but he, he seems he, like he that bloke anyway. Yeah. Too, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, open. he yeah. seems like that bloke. Yeah. 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 He, yeah. Um, yeah, we do a, we, well, we haven't done it for a while, but we do a podcast together as well. Um, yeah. Standing eight. Um, oh, okay. Standing eight. Yeah. 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 I've seen that around. Yeah. Yeah. So we, yeah. Um, and, and we have had, uh, uh, yeah, a lot of, um, a lot of sort of high profile guests on that, but also we've talked with Jeff about his story and I've, I've done a lot of um, program, different programs where I've talked through Jeff's story and there's, there's so much to it. And you sort of forget how big a star he was mm, um, mm, like easily mm, the biggest mm. name in Australia um, through that period. And, and his fights were events. Like he was massive, mm. um, but he's still around and he's still a relatively young man. And he's still really generous with his time to the point that, um, you know, I might, bump into someone who might want some stuff signed and I'll just ring him and he'll say, yeah, send them around to his house. And there's always someone in his house um, doing something, you know, he's always giving someone something or helping them with something. So yeah, he's a, he's a fantastic person. Yeah. It's so good to have him back invested in Australian boxing because he dipped away from it for quite a while. Yeah. Um, but now he's back um, obviously training a, a lot of fighters, yeah. um, including Brock Jarvis. Yeah. He's got Brock. Yeah on the cusp of something big but but others as well and um yeah uh I'll just get rid of that and yeah. um yeah it's uh yeah he's a yeah uh, he's a great yes and i'm sure if you just turn up at his house uh, yeah 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 well he he offered as well which was even better <laughs> i didn't really say yeah. i was just i was just happy with the 45 minutes i got from him but uh he was yeah he was happy to um yeah. but yeah he just he just seemed like that guy he's a type of guy that I, I know that i would love to i could have a conversation with him for hours if i wanted to so yeah. it was it was it was yeah. good to kind of get that feel out that energy and yeah it was funny because it and started off that with um yeah. You'll get that with most people in, in yeah. Australian boxing. Most people are, are very mm. giving of their time and, and mm. happy to chat through their stories. Um, sort of the people that you've liked uh, mm. as, a, as a fan coming through, and the people you've disliked. They're all mm. they're all pretty decent people. So mm. um, yeah, you always have people mm. who are willing to give their time. Yeah. Look, Ben, I went over time. I appreciate it, mate. Um, um, I'm a big I'm, I'm a big fan uh, of yourself, and I'm and um, I felt like uh, you know just after especially watching you and Jeff on the commentary the last fights I was like man I'd really like to get you on and have a chat to you about your journey and um, get your perspective on uh, on on things including uh, boxing and I was very happy to find out that you're in the film you did a bit of things in the film industry as well and you're very you know passionate about that um, you know um, which is something Didn't that you say you were watching um, the other night was that the the one from Brisbane Fox, yeah, yeah, team. yeah, yeah, with yeah, Isaac, yeah, 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 the Hardman one. Lost a picture for a while. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the one. Yeah, that, yeah, that's, yeah, they're the wonders of live television. Yeah, and, I know. Um, and that sort of stuff yeah, and, uh, we were in a studio in Sydney doing the fights from Brisbane because the border was closed and we couldn't yeah. physically go. Which, yeah, which is awful as a commentator, not being yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel the atmosphere. And yeah, it's, um, it's just a very difficult experience for them when you lose pictures as well. Um, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's that must hard. be weird. But what is it like? What is it like being a commentary? I mean, um, like, does it come natural to you in the sense that you would like to think that being in this sport, like doing doing training and obviously your time with Johnny Lewis, like, does it make it easy with a commentary in terms of like 
kind of storytelling what's going on and 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 you know and kind of breaking oh, yeah, down what's happening in the fight passionate about it i think you can yeah. tell when you're listening to and there's a few actually um, yeah international i agree at the moment. you can tell the but difference you can, yeah you can tell when people aren't invested in the sport and they're just yeah. doing it as a job um i've done um other sports or, or other uh, things just as a job at times and your heart's not in it but um in this yeah i'm passionate about it so makes it easy come through mm. in commentary and, and i don't think probably at the start when i started um doing boxing commentary um you know a, a decade or, or or more more than that ago um 15 years then, then maybe I, I don't think i was particularly good at it mm. but i think as you as you get going and you figure out what you're doing and you, you need, you learn how to sort of use your words and your voice to lend atmosphere to specific occasions, then yeah, you, you develop the skills, but if you don't have the passion for the sport, the, the passion for the sport, then that'll certainly come through. So I, I think that's the most important thing really. And, and I think it's really good in Australian boxing and obviously it's me, but I think it's good. We've got someone who is sort of um, lending their voice to the sport who, who it's, it's their main thing. It's what they love um, because that flows through yeah. sort of all of the I agree. Of what yeah. They're trying to do, I think. Um, so, yeah, at, at different times, we've sort of looked or, or networks have looked for sort of got a commentator for an event. Gone, there you go. You call this big boxing event. And it, it shows that, that they're not. Then that they're not living it day to day. They don't yeah. know everyone on that undercard and where they've been and what they're they're about and what's at stake. So um, yeah, yeah, I think you know that that really helps me um, do what I do. I think uh, I think fans in general are critical. I know I am when you do see someone who's not really involved, but they're just some sort of personality that they you know that, that people know. So they just chuck them on, and yeah, then fans they're, are critical anyway. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> fans yeah. Are gonna be, yeah, yeah. I know they're gonna. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and, but, and I know, like, not everyone's going to like me all the time, and not everyone's yeah. going to, you know, like certain things that I say or the way they perceive me to be. Yeah, well, that's okay. Like, yeah, as long as they're watching and um, they're giving people this platform, then you know it works. Yeah. But I think, yeah, I think, I think the flip side to it is when you have someone that's genuine, you can tell. Um, I agree with you. Like, when someone's passionate about something, um, you generally pick it up. You can pick it up in, in, in the way that they are delivering whatever it is that they're doing in your, in your sense, um, commentating fights. Um, you, you can pick up that, hey, like they know what they're talking about. And I think what shits them is when they, when they, when they, they can pick up that these guys aren't really involved in it and they, you know, they're carrying on yeah. about something completely, you know, completely different oh, to yeah. what's happening or whatever it is. But like you said, like it's such a, um, you know, to every other side of the beauty of it, there's the other side, which is, yeah, like you said, fans being critical or whatever it is. But like you said, fans are critical of anything, anything that moves the yeah. piece. <laughs> it's, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna right. go up in arms about it. So it's all right. You know, it is what it is. It's, right, and it's, it's yeah. all part of the conversation. So 100%. It's, it's not a yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, ideally people can understand the framework of, you know, where I work and what I'm doing. And yeah, and, yeah know that I, I ultimately would be there in the crowd if I wasn't there doing what I do. So, yeah. um, you know, if I get to play that part for as long as it happens, then, um, you know, I've been very, very, uh, very fortunate. Yeah. I think next time we've got to get you in the crowd with the mic, they'll be even better. <laughs> have some, yeah, have some few crazy, that, crazy fans around you. Yeah. Some of those, some of those crowds. Yeah, they're big and crazy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, um, yeah. yeah, there's great atmospheres. I'm, um, yeah, really looking forward to, to the, a couple of fights we've got coming up this yeah. next week as well. Back yeah. To the, the Star Casino. And um, most notably, you mentioned Andrew Maloney. Can't yeah. Wait to see him, see him fight. Yeah. In Australia. Um, yeah, he's been overseas or well, fighting overseas for a long time. He's such a fantastic dude, and um, really looking forward to his fight. Yeah. and seeing Harry Garside make his professional boxing debut as debut well. I think well. he's going to be a really important character for us um, in coming years. He's such yeah. a great personality and so likable. And, and he's with he's with years. your old mate Johnny as well, right? So yeah, he's yeah. With Johnny. Yeah, yeah he's with yeah. Johnny. So I'm fascinated to see how invested Johnny remains in that process because I, I didn't think they'd be able to get him out of essentially retirement, but yeah. um, they have. And he yeah. like he's, he's really into it. Into so, it. Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which is good. So it, it'll be, um, yeah, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see uh, how they manage to work through together and when, what becomes of him. Cause I think he, he can be, um, he can be a real star, Harry. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, Ben, I appreciate it, mate. Thank you so much again. And um, look, I look forward to seeing you called future fights and um, your involvement with boxing, but I really do appreciate it. And um, thank you. And I think, 
what you've done so far should be celebrated. And I know there's so much for uh, so much more ahead as well. Um, but um, it's yeah, it's a pleasure to talk to you, mate. And and there's a lot more I know now than obviously <laughs> prior, but uh, prior to chatting to you. But um, just even just your passion for the sport and 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 even just you know all the other things that you're involved in filmmaking and and etc. I think it's um it's really interesting. And yeah, that's the whole idea is to kind of dive into you know people's minds of kind of what makes them tick and what they're doing and um yeah mate look i, I wish you all the best and uh, thank you for giving your time and um hopefully you know this is not the only chat maybe next year when fights start going crazy uh, i'll try to pull you in for some uh some um some some picks for fights and etc um, i've got some ideas in my head um so yeah hopefully we'll, we'll stay in touch but again mate thank you i know i know um you know it could be busy and etc so I, I, um i really you know Appreciate you giving me your time. No, absolute pleasure, mate. And um, yeah. thanks for your passion for the sport yeah. as well um, yeah. and for, for having this outlet that you're having uh, here. I hope it continues to grow for you. And um, anytime I can help out, it's um, it's a pleasure. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, thanks for your time, mate. No, I appreciate it, mate. Cheers. Okay. Bye-bye. So, bye. Thanks. Bye.